You know what? There's something that I hear on a regular basis. Students message me, students just like you, and say, teacher, I understand about 80 or 90% of what you say. It's so amazing. But how come I can't understand other English speakers? Or what about this one? Teacher, your videos are great. I love them. I can understand you. But how come I can't understand English movies? you probably have asked the same question. Now, I'm so happy you can understand me, but I realized this is a big issue. One of my students last week actually asked the same question. She said, Tiff, how can I improve my English listening skills? So you know what I did? I came up with a simple five step plan. That's right five steps that will help you improve your English listening skills. Now I'm going to tell you these five steps, but I need you to do something for me. I need you to like share and also subscribe to this channel. Now, why do I need you to do this? Because my goal, my main goal is to help students around the world gain confidence in their ability to speak in English and also enjoy the process. But I need your help because I can't do it alone. I really want to help 1 billion students. I know it's a big number, but together we can make it happen. And all you have to do is like this video, share this video with someone else who's learning English and then subscribe to this channel. I would appreciate it so much because that will help me spread the word and help other students gain confidence. So again, like, share, subscribe. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. So five steps, we're going to look at five different steps that will help you improve your listening skills. Now, the first step is find a video or podcast, something you are interested in. Now I mentioned this in last week's video, the importance of actually finding something you're interested in because your brain is awesome. You already kind of have this this storage room of words connected to your interests. And all you have to do is translate those words to English. So find a video or podcast about a topic you're interested in. Now, again, let me describe it for you. Look for a video or a podcast that is connected to a topic you enjoy. Why? Because learning about topics you already enjoy makes it easy for your brain to make connections as you listen. You know, it's so funny, quick story time. I was teaching a class last week and two of my students were having a conversation and I was listening to them. And one of the questions was related to a challenge they faced in life. Now, one of my students, she's an architect, you know who you are. Hey, Daisy. And my other student, Gilberto, he works, um, in Brazil and he works with Caterpillar. There's a company that makes, uh, these machines that are used in construction and they're Caterpillar. Hey, Gilberto. So they were having a discussion about challenges and I was so amazed as I watched them speak confidently and comfortably about the challenges they faced related to their jobs and related to things connected to their jobs. Now, when they stopped, I said, you know what guys, do you realize that you were able to speak confidently about this topic? They said, yeah, we do. And I told them it was because they had already formulated ideas about the topic in their own language. So when I asked them the question in English, it was very easy for them to translate it into English because they already had kind of the storage room. Make sense. So again, find a video or podcast because it's going to be easier for you to connect the information in English. Now, so after you do that again, it needs to be your interests. You're going to move on to step number two, listen and mark the timestamps, the parts you don't understand. So here we go. Listen to the video or watch the video or listen to the podcast and write down the timestamps of the parts you don't understand. And now again, remember, you're only writing down the timestamps. Sometimes as a student, you feel like you have to write every word or every single part that you want to go back and look at or look in the dictionary. And sometimes you'll say, teacher, if I look in the dictionary for every single word, I won't finish in time. And I get it. That's why the second step is literally just write the timestamp. So let's say, for example, I'm going to take out my headphones. You find your podcast. 
you find the video and you are ready to watch the video or listen to the podcast. And then you start and from the very beginning, you don't understand anything. Put my headphones on, listening. Oh, I don't know what that is. Pause, write the timestamp, but you don't have to write anything else. Again, for step two, all right? Now, why is this important? Reason, jotting down quick notes is good because it doesn't stop you from listening to the remainder of the program. Oh, now real quick, you see there's another new, hold on one second, gotta fix this right here, gotta make sure, okay. All right, so you'll notice I said jotting down. Now, jotting down, that expression just means to make a quick note. You got it? So not like when you're studying for a test and you have to write extensively. Nope, quick notes. We say jotting down in English, all right? So you're gonna jot down very quickly the timestamp. So let's say, for example, I said I listened to something. This is what my notebook would look like. One minute and five seconds. Second, two minutes and 56 seconds. And you see, I just wrote the timestamps. This is all you have to do for part two as you listen. Now we're gonna progress to step number three. The third thing is you're gonna go to the timestamp and listen again and guess. So again, listen to the portions at the timestamps one more time and guess what is being said. That's right. So you've listened to it all the way through, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back. This is step three, and you're only gonna look for those parts that you didn't understand. Not the entire thing, just go to one minute and say 25 seconds. Listen to that short portion and try to figure out what's being said, and then guess. It's okay, just guess what you think is being said. Now why is this important? Here's the reason. This will help you focus on small portions instead of the entire program. Many times as an English learner, you get frustrated and overwhelmed because you're trying to see everything at once. Whereas this is saying, hey, you've already listened to the full program. Now go back to that little part and see, can you understand that portion right there? So let's see how it would look. For example, I listened to something. This is my notebook. One minute and five seconds. I heard prequisite, ah, but the word is prerequisite. Now, uh, prerequisite, let me kind of explain it to you. So prerequisite is something that must occur before something else happens. The easiest way to understand it, imagine when you were in university, right? And you were majoring in biology, right? It's your freshman year though, your first year, they say, ah, before you take, let's say organic chemistry, you need to take Chemistry, you need to take the basic chemistry, chemistry 101. Chemistry 101 is a pre or before requisite, right? You need to have this class before you take organic chemistry. In English, we say prerequisite, all right? Okay, so then two minutes and 56 seconds. On clad knife, and then realize, ah, on cloud nine. Now again, you guys are getting a lot of uh, expressions today. On cloud nine just means you feel awesome. You feel amazing. Everything is a-okay. We say on cloud nine. Now for me personally, when I'm on cloud nine, y'all, I usually sing and dance. Um, For the students in my academy, I kind of sang a lot last week for one of our Q&A episodes. Um, But yeah, when I'm really excited and really happy and I'm on cloud nine, I usually like to sing. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Number three, let's say back on D-Day. Well, oh, that's actually back in the day. Back in the day just means a long time ago. I taught that, I think I taught that on uh, Instagram. You can check out Instagram. I teach every day a new word and a new slang term, all right? Next, I said call Fiverr was actually all-nighter. All-nighter refers to studying all through the night. You have to work or study all through the night. We say all-nighter. I pulled an all-nighter. I did an all-nighter. It means I worked or studied all through the night, all right? Now let's say the last one I found was sunked. I'm like, what is sunked? Ah, it's actually zonked, all right? So pronunciation after me, zonked. One more time, zonked. Now zonked just means extremely exhausted or really tired. 
Now, I want to pause really quickly because you see, sometimes when you're on this step, you're on step three and you hear the words or expressions, you may not be able to find out the correct expression or words, or you want to ask some a question, someone a question. Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in. Cambly. I love partnering with Cambly because they're an awesome company. Now, Cambly has tutors from Australia, Canada, America, English speaking countries, and they are ready to help you. So many of my students in my academy actually use Cambly as a tutoring service. Now, Cambly, like I said, is so awesome that they want to give you a discount. They want to give you a special gift. Now, all you have to do is you see this code right on the screen. Use this code and let me tell you some of the gifts they want to give to you. Now, if you use this code and you say, I want to try Cambly out for a month, it's amazing. They will give you 10% off for one month. But let's say you want to go big. You say, you know what? I'm ready to take my English to the next level and speak with a tutor and you want to do three months. Well, Cambly says, you know what? We're going to give you 19% off. Now, if you're really, if you're really ready to go big, and do 12 months, Cambly says, we're gonna give you 32% off. So again, I love Cambly. They have amazing tutors and they will help you take your English to the next level and answer your questions when you get stuck. So use the coupon code right here on the screen. Cambly, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and students, take your English to the next level. All right, so again, we're on step three and this is the step where if you need to ask questions, you can ask questions to your tutors just like the tutors at Cambly. So again, we're gonna keep going on now. So we've looked at the timestamps and now we have to go on to the fourth step. Figure out the context before, after, and overall. So listen to the portions before and immediately after the portion you didn't understand. Then think about the video as a whole. So you see what happened in step number three when I was explaining, you know, back in the day, all nighter, I explained those to you, but we didn't listen to the same program, right? So even if you figure out back in the day or all nighter, you may not understand how that connects to the actual program you've listened to. This is when you have to figure out the context. What are they talking about at that point, before that point, after that point, and what's the whole focus of what you're listening to that program What's the topic or what's the focus? Now, why is this so important? This step is so important because it will help your brain start to connect the information and understand what you missed. So let's see how I would do it. So for example, four minutes and 11 seconds, they said back on D-Day, that's what I heard, but it's actually back in the day. Now, you see on the left and the right, the context before and the context after. These two pieces of information are going to help me kind of guess the real meaning of back in the day. All right. So here we go. Talking about all of the new technology available today that happened from three minutes and 30 seconds to four minutes and 10 seconds. Then they started to compare it to old technology, looking at the context before. Now what happened after the four minute and 11 second mark, they start to speak about childhood, <coughs> excuse me, memories. So they're suddenly going from talking about present day technology to childhood memories. And right in the middle, there's this expression back in the day. Ah, they're talking about old times or the past context clues. This can help you understand things when you're listening to things in English. All right. Now this helps us move to step number five. All right. So step number five is Listen one more time to make sure you understand. You're going to listen to the program or watch it one more time and make sure you are able to understand the portions you went over. This is so important because it will help you feel more confident and give your brain one last time to recognize what you learned. This is so important. So step one, two, three and four, that's where you're going to actually process and understand the information to try to guess what's going on. Then step five kind of solidifies. I understood my listening is improving. 
And that's all you need to do. These five steps are going to take your English to the next level. Now, I have part two, as I always do. And part two is for my academy students. If you're not a member, all you have to do is go to letsjumprightin.com and become a member right now. And you can watch part two. In part two, I really help you by giving you a worksheet where you can use the worksheet as you listen to programs to write timestamps. And I explain to you how to use the worksheet as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode and I want you to take your English to the next level and improve your listening skills. So don't forget when you get to step three and you're trying to guess what is actually being said, you may need a tutor. And that's where Cambly again comes in to help you. So don't forget to use the coupon code for Cambly. You'll see it right in the description. Cambly, thanks again for sponsoring this video. Guys, I love you guys. I really want to help you improve your English. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you can help somebody else take their English to the next level. I'll see you next week. But as always, remember to speak English. Oh yeah, you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> okay, now, whew, I'll be very honest. Today's story is going to be uh, maybe funny. It's, it's interesting. So I will never forget this. So growing up, I, I was a good child. I was a good kid. I, I wasn't disrespectful. I followed the rules. You know, I had fun, but I was a good kid. I listened to my parents, but I remember this one time, um, my mom and I were home. My dad was at work and we were in the kitchen and my mom said something and I got a little bit irritated, but I wasn't crazy. Now I will tell you this about my mom. My mom is short. We say sometimes short people are very, uh, spunky. Oh, they're spitfires. <laughs> so I want you to imagine, you know, fire is hot, right? And you spit like t you spit. So Spitfire is someone who may jump on you real quick or they can be aggressive sometimes. And my mom is loving, but she can be a Spitfire sometimes. So anyways, I'm not sure exactly what was said or what the situation was, but for some reason my mom got upset and she told me to go upstairs to my room. Now I was upset too, but again, remember I told you she was a Spitfire, so I wasn't crazy. I wasn't going to talk back. Now talk back is when you know, parents tell their child something and the kid says, well, I don't want to do that. Well, why do I have to? Never, never did not do that. Did not do that. My mom is a spitfire. My dad, my parents raised us to never be disrespectful. So we weren't disrespectful. My sister and I, we were not disrespectful. So anyways, but this situation, something happened in the kitchen. My mom told me to go upstairs and I was a teenager. So I was a little bit, you know, when you're a teenager going through your adolescent phase, you kind of you know, you get upset, you want to kind of show your emotion, but I was not crazy because my mom was a spitfire. So she said, go upstairs to your room. So I said, yes, ma'am. Now I, even in my eyes, my facial expression, I couldn't show any, any measure of disrespect. I couldn't say, nope, you better not. You better not. You get popped. So she said, go to your room. And again, so I had to go upstairs to my room. Now my kitchen from my kitchen to my room, honestly, to walk, maybe it took, I would say 30 or 40 seconds. Like it's not close. It's not far, but it's not close. So, you know, we live in the same home, right? So I, I walked up the steps and again, in my head, I'm just mad, but my facial expression, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I walk up the steps. My mom's still in the kitchen. I get upstairs and I get to my door and I'm just about to open my door. Very quietly, very quietly. I said, I kid you not, it was that, it was that quiet. Now, I have the mic right here, so it's loud to you, but it was very quiet, like, man. I literally did that. Before I could get it out of my mouth, my mom downstairs says, you better not suck your teeth. <laughs> okay, she said, you better not suck your teeth. I, the level of fear that came over me, I said, there's no way in the world she could have heard me suck my teeth. It was so low, so quiet, so quiet. She was downstairs in the kitchen and she heard it. She said, you better not suck your teeth. Needless to say, I never sucked my teeth ever again in my life, ever again in my life. And I realized, oh, my mom's crazy. <laughs>
<laughs> but no, again, so we're talking about being able to listen. So we say my mom can hear everything. She can hear everything. So if you have children, sometimes you need to try that. Even if you don't hear them suck their teeth, call them out. Say, oh, you better not suck your teeth. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, I never sucked my teeth ever again. Uh, I continued to be scared of my mom thinking that she could hear anything anywhere. And yeah. So yeah, we say, you know, sometimes you have to put the fear of God into your children so that they can respect you. And I can guarantee when I have children, I will do the exact same thing. I will not tolerate sucking of teeth or any disrespect, <laughs> but I really never forgot their situation. Um, let me know in the comment section if you guys ever experienced a situation where your mom or your dad kind of got upset or they heard you do something that you thought they couldn't have possibly heard you doing. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I'll talk to you next week. Have a good one.